I'm Brandi Van Patten, the content manager here at EMS Environmental. Today I'm talking with one of our project managers, Matt Selgrath, and we're going to discuss a lot of information about underground storage tank removals. So to begin, Matt, we'll start at the beginning of the process. What's the first step to complete when a client wants to have a storage tank removed? Um, in order to get the UST system closure process started, uh, we would make the proper notifications to the state and local governments. Um, in some circumstances, the uh, local municipalities may require uh, some permitting as well. Does the contractor involved need to be licensed? Um, Yes, on a on a state by state basis, there's going to be certain certifications or licenses required, um, you know, for that sub subcontractor. Okay, what's the typical removal process like? The UST closure process would get started basically um, by removing all the product in the tanks, um, inerting the tank, and um, w once the tank is inerted. Um, we would uh, begin to excavate and then remove the tank from the ground, uh, clean it, and then get it ready for disposal. You said the tank needs to be inerted. What does mm -hmm. that mean and what happens if you don't do it? Okay, um, when we say inert, basically we mean to uh, you know, uh, remove the oxygen from, from the tank um, in order to reduce the ability for like an explosive atmosphere. Um, obviously, if you, if you didn't do that, um, you could have uh, 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 some safety issues probably uh, arising. Uh, one thing I left out, when we do do the inerting and we, and we displace the oxygen, we're displacing the oxygen with another um, non-explosive gas, such as nitrogen or carbon monoxide, or sorry, carbon dioxide. So do the tanks get cut up or can they ever be reused? What, what kind of determines what happens? Um, in, in some circumstances, um, you, you can reuse the tanks. Um, in order to reuse them, they're going to need to be recertified. Um, sometimes that recertification uh, could be more costly than actually just doing the removal and replacement. Sure. Can a tank ever be abandoned in place instead of being removed? Uh, yes. Um, in certain circumstances, um, you know, say the USTs, the USTs are uh, beneath the foundation of a building, or it could be also outside the building. But when you do the excavation, you're going to um, create structural issues for buildings that are around the excavation. Um, the state will give you um, a variance to do a closure in place. Um, if you we do the closure in place, um, steps are typically the same. Um, we'll, we'll inert and enter the tank, clean it in place. Um, once um, it's cleaned, there, there will be some sampling that will need to be done beneath or through and beneath the tank. And then uh, once that sampling is completed, um, the tank would be uh, filled with like an inert material such as like a, a, a concrete slurry or um, uh, like a polyfoam. So what happens after a tank is removed? Once everything's removed, we would typically have to um, follow a state guideline, but we're going to have to go through um, a, a, a sampling protocol. Um, soil samples would have to be collected from beneath the each of the tanks that were within the system, um, beneath product delivery lines, uh, beneath dispensers. Um, in circumstances where groundwater is encountered during the excavation activities, groundwater would also have to be included in that sampling protocol. And do you have to file a report also? Uh, yes, uh, we typically we, we call that a closure report, um, and that's 
again, state by state on how they um, have their requirements for their reporting. Um, but the reporting typically is going to have the analyticals of the sampling, which I just spoke of. Um, it's going to have um, basically a uh, uh, disposal documentation of the UST system components and the USTs themselves. Um, it'll also have um, like a map basically showing, you know, where the sample locations were in the event that we have, um, you know, uh, some of the constituents come back above standard, um, we'll know where those samples were collected. Are there any standards that these analytical results have to meet? Uh, yes, I mean, there's there's like a, a, a set of standards or action levels um, that the soil samples or groundwater samples would have to um, be below um, in the event that they were ab above um, those action levels the property or the, the site would have to go into probably um, that state's corrective action process. All right, Matt, I think you've answered all of my questions. If you still have any that we didn't cover, you can feel free to explore some of our website or even give us a call so you can speak to one of our experts like Matt today. Thank you for watching. Mm -hmm.